All right, let's look at standard 13, substandard E. Describe the significance of the progressive reforms, such as the initiative, referendum, and recall, and direct election of senators. <clears throat> and we're going to look at that. Reform of labor laws, I think we've already looked over. And efforts to improve the living conditions of the poor in the cities, we've kind of kicked that around a little bit with Jane Adams and all those laws. So let's move with this progressive reforms initiative recall referendum and direct election of senators <coughs> all right all three of these we want to cover first let's look at the initiative is a proposal for a law that originates with state citizens and bypasses the legislature and gets on the ballot by the petition process a referendum a process where legislatures place a proposed law or a proposed amendment uh, on the ballot to allow citizens to vote the law into effect. <clears throat> and recall would allow voters to petition to have an elected representative who is already in office removed from office before his term's up. And then this direct election of U.S. representatives <clears throat> is referring to the 17th Amendment of the United States Constitution. And here party bosses control state legislatures that elected representatives to the U.S. Senate. To limit this control, the progressives proposed allowing citizens to directly elect U.S. Senators. And that's exactly what they did with the 17th Amendment. And all four of these are pro progressive political reforms. So they're progressive reforms. We want to look at this closely. Let's look at initiative referendum and recall. Through a petition process here in initiative and through a petition process here in recall, in the First Amendment, of the Bill of Rights that says we have a right to petition the government. In the initiative, the people originate an idea or initiate an idea, and then they form, they sign this petition and send it around. If they can get 30% of the people who voted in the last election to sign the petition, they can send it to the Georgia General Assembly in Atlanta, and then they must put it on a referendum to vote on, and then the people will vote on it. See, in this way, the people are directly voting on law. They initiate it and start it, and they voted on it. In the state of Georgia, we do not have the initiative process for amending our Constitution. This, this process is not allowed in amending our Constitution. I think it is for other laws, though. All right, now the second one here, referendum, is where the Georgia General Assembly, our legislature of the state in Atlanta, uh, when it has legislation or a constitutional amendment that it wants to put up for a vote, it will send that to, uh, to a referendum vote, and the people will then vote on it. So here we have the people directly electing, uh, directly making laws. Here we also have people directly electing laws, electing laws, and are voting for laws in. All right, and then here is where the people have a politician on the local or state level they don't like and think he's not doing his job or doing something corrupt, and they want to remove him from office. So what they do is send around a petition. If they can get 30% of the voters who voted in the past election for that particular official, they can get this petition sent on uh, to the Secretary of State, who will then hold a special election, and then the people will vote to remove that official. Okay, so this is the recall process. So initiative, referendum, recall. If you look at the end of this, the people are the ones who are voting. Right here. And in this one and this one, the initiative and recall, the people are the ones that actually initiate it to begin with. So all three of these, initiative, referendum, and recall, are examples of direct democracy. And what we mean by direct democracy is where the people are directly involved in making laws or making things happen, like this. Making a, people directly involved in making law. People are directly involved in making law. People are directly involved in removing an official. And all three of these are examples of direct democracy where the people are directly involved. Here, 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 and here. All right, so that's an example of direct democracy. And keep in mind, initiative, referendum, recall, also progressive era we've been talking about from 1900 to 1917, is progressive reforms, just in the political arena, okay? All right, now let's move on to direct election of senators, because our 
we need to describe the significance of the progressive reform such as initiative for referendum recall and direct election of senators. So we want to turn our attention to direct election of senators. <clears throat> Alright, the real question here is who elects the United States Senator? We have two in the state of Georgia. Who elects those two people? Okay. Who's going to choose those two people? And it's really the 17th Amendment is going to change this process and who chooses these two people. Okay. In the original Constitution, before it was changed, because amendment means change. So the 17th Amendment is actually the 17th change of the Constitution. So the original Constitution said that who chooses this person that's already written in the original Constitution. And here's the original Constitution. Here's the flow. Okay, here's the people down here. We're talking about direct democracy again. The people directly vote the 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 in Georgia now we have fourteen House representative members and we have fourteen districts. So the people vote for the House of Representatives members directly. That's what we call the People's House. Now the people do not directly elect the president. They indirectly elect the president. The people actually elect the presidential electors who then go to the electoral college and then they elect the U.S. president. So that's an indirect route there. So the Senate in the original Constitution was the same way. It was indirect. The people would vote for their state legislatures and then the state legislatures would then vote for the United, two United States senators that went to Washington, D.C. I hope you can understand that. All right, right. So no direct route here, no direct route here, but there is a direct route here in the U.S. House of Representatives. This has not changed, okay? This has not changed, but this route here has changed, okay? So what we essentially have here is in the original Constitution, the state legislatures, all 50 state legislatures, are going to select these two people, okay, that are going to be United States senators for the state, for their particular states, okay? All right, so here's how this is going to work in the original Constitution. The people elect the people that go to the Georgia General Assembly, in other words, the state legislatures, or state legislators, if we're talking about the people. And then while they're in Atlanta, they're going to choose and then send two people to the United States Senate, the state legislature is, Georgia General Assembly. Okay, that's the original Constitution. That's how it was supposed to go. All right, now, after the 17th Amendment, there's a change. The 17th Amendment is going to change something. All right, here's what's going to happen with the 17th Amendment. We're going to wipe out these state legislatures, and we're going to put a direct route from the people straight to the U.S. Senate. So the people themselves are going to vote for both U.S. Senators that are going to Washington, D.C. Let me show you. Here's before, uh, with the original Constitution, or before the... This is before the 17th Amendment, after the 17th Amendment. Before the 17th Amendment, after the 17th Amendment. So you see how the direct election by the people, direct election of U.S. Senators by the people, that's what we mean, this direct route. It's not indirect to the leg state legislatures and then to the state legislatures vote for them. So here's the change. There it is before the 17th Amendment. This is it after the 17th Amendment. I hope this helps you understand this concept of direct election of senators. So <clears throat> now we have this issue after that 17th Amendment where the people do a direct election. There are two senators from every state that are going to go to Washington, D.C. So since the people are directly involved and directly voting for their two U.S. senators, that is an example of direct democracy in which the people directly impact their election of who they want to go to Washington, D.C. So the, the, the 17th Amendment is an example of direct democracy. So, all together, the progressive reforms, which are examples of direct democracy, are the initiative, the referendum, the recall, and the 17th Amendment. Okay? So here it is. 17th Amendment, direct democracy. The reason why, the people directly vote their two uh, senators. And then if we go back to initiative referendum recall, are examples of direct democracy because they are directly involved here. Okay? People voting, people voting, people voting making laws or removing people from office directly. 
So the people involved, and that is an example of direct democracy. And all of these, the initiative referendum recall, 17th Amendment, are direct democracy examples, but they're also progressive reforms. Okay, I think we've kind of nailed that one down. Describe the significance of the progressive reforms, such as the initiative, recall, and referendum, direct election of senators. Ask questions in class, raise your hand, good luck on the quiz, test, and the OCT.